Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey, and on this episode of Redefined Show for Adorama TV, we speak with Tony Corbell again, and he digs into how to get started in fashion and shares with us that it doesn't matter what you love to shoot and where you are, as long as you keep a few things in mind, you can do what you love anywhere. Check it out. Hi, Tony. Tamara. How are you? I'm terrific. So you moved to New York to shoot fashion well, I work. Moved to New York. You, I moved to New York because everybody thinks that they have to live in New York to shoot fashion. Let's talk about this. Yeah. Because I know for sure a number of people who feel like, because I'm not living in that place, yeah where the work is, right. I can't do it. I either move there or I switch my focus. So let me just tell you one, one quick thing. One of my favorite photographers on this particular planet yes. is a guy named Nick Vedros. Okay. V-E-D-R-O-S. Nick lives in Kansas. <laughs> this particular planet. Nick Vedros lives in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. And I said, why, why Kansas City? He says, I can be in New York in three hours. I can be in L.A. in three hours. And he says, I want to be in the middle of the country so I can move. I don't want to be stuck on one side or the other side. Right. He said, I can shoot for clients on both sides all the time. So he carved out a niche of commercial editorial work and, and advertising work for him by deciding, I'm just going to be here. And, and he built this great studio, and he built a penthouse on the roof, a five-star penthouse. So when his clients come in, they don't check into the hotel. Brilliant. They stay at his penthouse. I There's love a hot that. tub on the roof. Yeah. It is an amazing thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have to kind of figure out who you so are. So either where you want he to either be. pops out to the jobs or they come or to they him. Or they come to him. And when they come to him, they're saving budget money. Yeah. Because yeah, they he's are. putting them up free. What I learned from that was you don't have to be in New York. You do if you're going to pound the pavement every single day and that's all you're going to do is shoot fashion, maybe you do. Uh, I thought that's what I needed to do. So I went to work and I did a lot of work with Hasselblad. <clears throat> I was in New Jersey. And I was in and out of the city every day, every other day. After seven years of that, it kind of wears on you. Yeah. And and I was in the city quite a bit. And and you were training in and out? Or? I, was, I was in and out. Well, training or driving in either way. Yeah. But I would always park and then taxi around. What I learned was that I loved New York in the winter mm -hmm. mm. because it was quiet. When it was snow, ah. the city was calm and quiet. Yeah. In the summer, I hated New York because... All the bad smells thawed out, and it was really miserable. You know, it, it just wasn't a fun place to be. In the city, the heat, can't especially escape. the humidity, the heat and the humidity gets in between the buildings, and mm. it can't go anywhere. Yeah. So it's kind of a miserable place. Uh, but I, but I was pretty glad to escape there. And when I did escape, I went right back to San Diego, and I could breathe because I. When could, you say escape, you know, so you made the conscious decision. I, I made don't the like this decision, anymore. And I said I've got to go to San Diego because I don't like this anymore. Was it a push or a pull? It was a push. Yeah. I, I said I'm 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 gone. Okay. I'm going to San Diego, uh, and it and it was this, it was the right move for me at the time. Right. So what did that do to your fashion work? I stopped shooting it. Oh, so you didn't you didn't keep shooting it? I didn't. Okay. No, I really didn't. But what so I did. So what did you do, start doing? Commercial. I did start editorial. shooting more editorial work. Okay. And I started shooting for, for I don't know what the reason is. For some reason, I got into a spin for a few years where I was really big shooting chefs and aircraft at night. That's quite a specific. Now, genre. how weird is that? So yeah. what happens is I did this great aircraft picture at night and I lit this thing beautifully I had fog machines and I had gels and I had color and I made this great sexy picture of a, of a Learjet at night and I hosed down the runway so I've got reflections and that pilot unbeknownst to me knows every other private aircraft pilot on the planet mm. and he shared this picture with everybody so all of a sudden I'm the aircraft guy you're the guy I'm the guy so everybody yeah. that would fly they would fly their planes into San Diego for me to shoot them yeah. at night, and it was and it was really great, and it was fun, and it was exciting work, but it was long, these hours were long. I mean, and it might take me six hours to do two exposures, wow. because these were I was painting with light, yeah. and I was painting. I, I might have a hundred pops with a, with a speed light on this shoot, yeah. And you know, I would bring in a, one of the pilots and put him in the cockpit, and don't you move. Go, you cannot move, or do I not breathe. <laughs> and and I did I did learn with pilots, they're so vain. That with pilots, if you need them to not move, what you have to say is, if you move, you won't be recognizable. <laughs> That's all you have to say to a pilot. They'll never move. That was great. <laughs> so you learn, you learn little things these like techniques, this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, these little techniques. So I shot all these aircraft. Then I shot a couple of great chef pictures that got picked up. Well, all of a sudden, Marriott loves me, and I want to shoot chef. And I'm shooting the Marriott uh, Fort Lauderdale chef. And, and they're using these posters in the lobbies of the hotel. You know, come to our restaurant on yeah. Sunday for the brunch. Here's Chef Bob. Yeah. And, and I'm shooting these chef pictures. Yeah. So I kept shooting a lot of 
portrait sort of work, but it was editorial in its nature yeah. and, and kind of a commercial use of the portrait. If right. That makes any right. Sense. Yeah, it does. It does. So it's a commercial portrait. So, so you moved away from fashion, but you went heavily into commercial still editorial. People. Still, Found a new still niche. People. Right. Or yeah, niche. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I kind of drove past my love and desire to shoot more fashion. Right, because you kind of burned out on it. Although I got one scheduled for next week in Then Dallas. you went back into it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah exactly. So I, uh, one job came in for recently, for, for next week. Okay, so obviously throughout the length of your career, you, you, it's not enough to just shoot well and light well mm -hmm. and have the relationships. You also have to have some bedrock of very smart business mm -hmm. to, to be having the career right. you were having. Right. What would you say is um, probably one of the best tips you could give somebody about business? Um, most people that are that are professional photographers, their work is seasonal. So, <clears throat> and especially in the portrait world, you're you're it's so very seasonal. Mm -hmm. Many portrait photographers make seventy or eighty percent of their income in the last quarter of the year. If you're not saving that money to get you through the first half of the next year, you're a fool. So I think that you have to make sure you recognize and know your numbers. Mm. You've got to know where you stand. Yeah. And uh, I don't think that I can stress, you know, strongly enough the need to save some money. Yes. Save some money. Just yeah. find a way to save it. Don't put it somewhere where you can't get to it. Right. And Separate accounts away. even. Stop. Just because you had a $12,000 month does not mean you can go out and buy $8,000 worth of new lenses. <laughs> yes. Don't do it. Yeah. Put that money somewhere and put it away. Right. Because you're going to need it because next, next July, things are going to be lean again. Yeah, desert's coming. Desert's coming. Yeah, it's true. Pay, you just have to pay attention to the numbers. And, and of you, course, sales tax. Know so, that that's never your well, money. And, and if you're not an, a CPA, then you better have somebody on your team that is. Right. And if you have to farm it out to somebody that's a, an independent, do that. But you've got to make sure you know where your numbers are. Yeah. And that's such a smart thing because, you know, I don't care what artistic career you're in. If you want to be a constant player over, you want to do the work you love constantly, business is such a massive part of it. And if it's not you, make sure somebody on your team that's it. is same, the same one. Same with sales and marketing. If, you, if you're not your best salesman, then get somebody that is. Right. Because you can light everything. But if and nobody's selling that job, you can't even show we're, it. We're the artists and we want to give everybody everything. Yeah. Oh, don't you like my work? Can I just give you another free print? Yeah. That's what we do. We don't. You don't need that in business. You do have to value yourself, and you have to recognize that what you do matters and means something to the clients. Yes. Don't devalue that. And 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 I can give you one other ridiculous little piece of advice. Don't price yourself or your work to what you personally would afford or would spend. Oh yes. Because we all right? value things differently. Right. Absolutely. What's it worth to that client? Yeah, like the amount of times people you. say, well, I wouldn't pay that much for it, so I can't charge for it. I'm like, I would never pay for my rates. Apples and oranges. That's not the point. Yeah. Right. The point is, what's my value to my client? So true. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. You're awesome. You're the best. Thanks for that fabulous insight, Tony. Check us out here next time on Adorama TV. And do not forget, you should subscribe to Adorama TV for some amazing content across the board.